Have you ever felt like you're on an emotional roller coaster with someone who showers you with love one moment and then cruelly devalues you the next? This could be a sign of narcissistic abuse. A form of psychological and emotional manipulation, narcissistic abuse is more prevalent than we might think. It affects many, causing deep emotional scars and leaving victims confused and hurt. In this video, we're going to explore the unsettling cycles of narcissistic abuse, a pattern characterized by three distinct phases, idealization, devaluation, and discard. Understanding these phases can be a powerful tool, shedding light on the manipulative tactics used by narcissists and helping victims recognize the signs. It's a journey into the world of emotional manipulation, where love and affection can quickly turn into devaluation and abandonment. So buckle up as we begin this important discussion. Stay tuned as we delve into the first phase of narcissistic abuse, the idealization phase. The first phase of narcissistic abuse is often the most intoxicating, idealization. This phase is marked by a flood of affection, attention, and praise from the narcissist. It's like stepping into a spotlight where you are the star of the show. You are made to feel loved, valued, and important. You are showered with compliments, gifts, and seemingly genuine interest. The narcissist creates an illusion of the perfect partner, friend, or soulmate. It's a heady experience, and it's easy to see why victims are quickly drawn into the relationship. This idealization phase is not about genuine love or admiration, though. Instead, it serves as a smokescreen, a facade meticulously crafted by the narcissist to lure the victim into their web. The narcissist presents themselves as the perfect match, the person who finally gets you, who sees you for who you are. The intensity of this phase can be overwhelming, intoxicating even. It's a whirlwind of emotions that leaves you craving more. But it's essential to remember that this phase is just that, a phase. It's not a sustainable state of being, and it's not an indicator of a healthy relationship. It's a manipulation tactic, a means to an end for the narcissist. So while the idealization phase may feel like a dream come true, it's the calm before the storm. Next, we will discuss the devaluation phase, where the narcissist's behavior takes an ugly turn. Just when you think you've found the perfect partner, the devaluation phase begins. This stage is where the illusion of perfection starts to crack. It's like a sudden plunge from the heights of affection and adoration into a chasm of criticism and judgment. The narcissist's behavior undergoes a dramatic shift. They transform from a doting partner or friend into a critical, demanding, and often harsh individual. The compliments that were once plentiful now take the form of critiques and put-downs. Their once warm demeanor turns cold, and they may become emotionally distant or completely unavailable. The victim, caught off guard, is left feeling confused, hurt, and unsure of themselves. They start to question their own worth and competence as the narcissist's criticism intensifies. The harsh words and cold behavior erode the victim's self-esteem, leaving them on shaky ground, questioning their every move. This phase is the narcissist's way of asserting control and dominance in the relationship. The victim, now accustomed to the narcissist's affection, finds themselves yearning for the idealization phase, leaving them susceptible to further manipulation. The devaluation phase is a stark contrast to the idealization phase, creating a whirlwind of emotions that leave the victim disoriented and desperate for stability. This destabilization is a tactic used by the narcissist to keep the victim hooked, leading them to endure the cycle of abuse in the hope of returning to the initial phase of idealization. After devaluation comes the final blow, the discard phase. The discard phase is when the narcissist abruptly ends the relationship, leaving the victim feeling abandoned and worthless. This phase is like a storm that arrives without warning, leaving the victim reeling in its wake. The narcissist, with no explanation or justification, simply withdraws, leaving a trail of confusion, hurt, and a profound sense of rejection. The aftermath of the discard phase is emotionally brutal for the victim. They're left questioning their worth, their reality, and their ability to trust. This phase can be incredibly painful and difficult to overcome, often leading to feelings of depression and anxiety. Now, let's delve into some additional characteristics of this phase. First, we have hoovering. 
This is when the narcissist, after discarding the victim, attempts to suck them back into the relationship. It's a manipulative tactic designed to confuse and destabilize the victim further. Next is triangulation. This is a strategy where the narcissist creates conflict by pitting the victim against others, weaving a complex web of deceit and confusion. Finally, we have gaslighting. This is a form of psychological manipulation where the narcissist denies their abusive behavior, making the victim question their own perceptions and sanity. These tactics are all part of the narcissist's toolkit, used to exert control and maintain dominance over their victims. Understanding them is key to recognizing and breaking free from the cycle of narcissistic abuse. Now that we've outlined the three phases of narcissistic abuse, let's discuss how to break free from this harmful cycle. Recognizing the cyclical pattern of narcissistic abuse is the first step towards breaking free. With this understanding, you can begin to untangle yourself from the web of manipulation that has been spun around you. The journey towards freedom starts with setting boundaries. These are non-negotiable lines of respect that protect your mental and emotional well-being. Boundaries may involve limiting contact with the narcissist or even cutting ties altogether. This can be a difficult decision, but remember, it's a crucial step in reclaiming your autonomy and self-worth. Next, seek support. This could be from trusted family members, friends, or a professional therapist. The effects of narcissistic abuse can be deep and far-reaching, and it's okay to lean on others for help. Engaging in open conversations about your experiences can provide valuable insight and validation. It can help you to process your emotions, rebuild your self-esteem, and develop strategies for healthier relationships in the future. Finally, remember this crucial truth. The narcissistic abuse you've experienced is not your fault. You did not cause it, and you do not deserve it. The blame lies entirely with the abuser, who chose to manipulate and control instead of fostering a relationship based on mutual respect and love. Remember, you are not alone, and you deserve to be in a healthy and loving relationship. Thank you for joining us in this important discussion about narcissistic abuse.